Well, hello everybody. We are back. This is now episode three on chapter two of this book, Start With Jesus by Julianne Stans. And you may notice we have a little bit of a different um, setting here today and a special guest sitting with us. And we are so excited <laughs> to introduce to you the author of this book, Julianne Stans, who um, has traveled down to, to visit with us today. And we're gonna talk about a little bit about chapter two. But before we do that, you're coming here um, to speak to the parish in March after we've all had a chance to read this lovely book. And so I wondered if you would mind just giving us maybe three um, fun facts about yourself, if you have anything to share with us, Julia. I do. I love coming down to St. Bernard Parish. I have been over and back for the years coming down for the discipleship nights and all kinds. And I just, the people here are really wonderful. Three little facts about me. Um, I like to search for sea glass. Oh. And I have jars and jars of it from the beach that has washed up. Wow. So that's fact number one. The second fact is last Christmas, on Christmas Day, I found a Celtic plaque with an S, and my last name stands, that had washed up in the beach in Algoma. Oh my. Wow. And then my third little fact is I find heart-shaped rocks everywhere. And I have piles and piles and piles of heart-shaped rocks. So I'll bring some down when I come down for your night, too. Oh, well, that's, that's all very fascinating. Thank you so much. Wow. Spend a lot of time near the water, it sounds like. Oh, yeah, scavenging and thinking. Oh, that's beautiful. All right. Well, thank you for that. So a little bit of snippet inside uh, Julianne for us as we warm up here. But as always, I'm going to um, turn to Deacon Mike and see if you would mind leading us with our opening prayer. Absolutely. Today. All right. Thank you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Lord God and Creator, we thank you for all the many gifts that you have given us, the parish, and the diocese. Please be with us as we continue on our journey with this book, Start With Jesus. Let us know how to come and find you more fully. Please bless us with the gifts of your spirit. Thank you and praise you and thank all of you um, in your precious name. Amen. amen. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 Thank you. Okay, so um, we had kind of put together a couple questions, Zeke and Mike and I did, that we thought we would just sort of throw at you and see what you have to say in, turn, in response to us. And So I was going to start us off with this question. Um, in your book, and, and speaking to you, you, obviously you travel a lot, you meet a lot of people on your travels, you talk about your faith, you share things with people, and listen to a lot of people's stories. And so um, in this chapter, which uh, I think is titled, is it not the good news? Um, yeah, what is the good news? Um, so I'm wondering, is your experience as you travel around and you talk to other people, is this the good news? Is that something, especially meeting a lot of Catholics, is that something um, that every other Catholic on the planet seems to know about except us here in Northeast Wisconsin? Or is that something that's kind of new to our faith, if you will? Yeah, I think this is a great question because to me it goes to the heart of, you know, why we do what we do, why we live as Catholics. It's, it's around the person of Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. And I noticed, um, especially because my background is not so um, dissimilar from a lot of you, that many um, of my family members, people I know, would not talk to me about Jesus. Mm -hmm. They they wouldn't talk, they wouldn't say the name Jesus. Mm -hmm. And then I realized um, when I came from Ireland to the U.S. that that was very similar in Northeast Wisconsin. Mm -hmm. People um, believed faith was something that you keep quiet, that it is private. Mm -hmm. um, and so I've um, often shared with people, faith is personal. Mm -hmm it's not supposed to be kept private. Oh. And so we're, we're called to share that. In fact, you know, in the Bible, you hear over and over and over, go, go, mm. don't be afraid, go out and share, go and teach, go and preach, go and share. And that always leads me to that question, you know, what are we sharing? And mm -hmm. a lot of people think of in, faith in terms of what, here's what you need to know, and here's how you do it. But it's about the who. Yeah. And to me, that's what the good news is about. It's about you know, how has your life been touched and transformed? And then who can you share that with? So it's mm -hmm. always about the who. And I think a lot of Catholics are very uncomfortable with that. So if you're watching mm -hmm. this and you're like, yeah, I didn't grow up like that either. Recognize that this has been a generational issue for Catholics mm -hmm. for many, many generations, yeah. unfortunately. Well, thanks so much for saying that. I know um, Deacon Mike and I have had this conversation before. And I, I will say, as a lifelong Catholic, um, 
The name of Jesus and the good news was not something I was familiar with at all in my formation um, from childhood to adulthood. However, um, my, my dad's um, still not Catholic and his entire family, he was raised mainstream Protestant. And so, um, so when we would get together for family things, um, you know, the prayer was always very different than the bless us, O Lord, that we said with the Catholic side yes. of the family. It was always, thank you, Lord Jesus, for gathering us here today, you know. And so a lot of my childhood was spent like, is this the same faith? Like, how are we, how can I get these two things to come together? Because I really kind of like this warm, fuzzy Jesus that mm -hmm. half of my family mm -hmm. seems to know. But I also really value the tradition mm -hmm. and the... And the um, the rights that we have. So it's this beautiful coming together for me on this time in history that we're kind of returning to our Catholic roots of understanding that good news. Mm -hmm. um, but definitely, I know it was not something I knew or thought was even remotely Catholic when I was growing up. And Deacon Mike, I, what would you have to add here? Because well, since I didn't grow up Catholic, right? and no. nobody in my family is Catholic other than me, so um, I had kind of an opposite, right? So sure. the good news was shared, and the person was always Jesus. Mm -hmm. And so when I stepped into the Catholic faith, I stepped into a lot, what I thought was a lot of ritual and rite mm -hmm. and tradition, which was beautiful. It really, it really drew me into that mm -hmm. beauty. Um, but the message, I think, kind of gets um, muddled or watered down or whatever you want to say, mm -hmm. right? That everybody has great intentions, and yet... Jesus somehow goes missing in all of that, mm -hmm. it seems like. Yeah. And so to bring that back, um, I, I, that's why I'm so excited with the path that the diocese is taking, mm -hmm. because it's allowing me to kind of go back into my Protestant roots a little bit and bring forth Jesus mm -hmm. to share with others mm -hmm. and not have to tiptoe around that mm -hmm. or be ashamed, but make it the central point of what we're doing, mm -hmm. not just an the add -on. peripheral. Yeah. This is a good point. I, when I was writing Start With Jesus, one of the things I wanted to understand is why people why Catholics typically don't share, mm. um, they're, they're faithful, but they are afraid to share about Jesus. Mm. And so um, what, when I did some research, what I realized is, you know, the American context is very much an immigrant church. Like we all came from somewhere else. We've Irish right. roots, we've, you know, Belgian or German, and just, you know, your parishioners are kind of from all right. corners of the world. And then when we came into the U.S., which is primarily a society that was founded on very individualistic, Protestant type of values, mm -hmm. um, you know, particularly Irish and Italian Catholics were told no popery. That was the thing, mm. and, uh, and popery wasn't something that was on the table, right? No pope, right. no popery, you know. Right. And um, it's kind of keep your faith to yourself. Mm. Uh. And so the message to immigrant Catholics coming into the U.S. was stay quiet. Uh, they, so that's why the Irish all, or the Italians or the Belgian, they all lived in these mm -hmm. enclaves yeah. and these communities together yeah. where their faith was shared, not often verbally, like they didn't pray together, but they shared food together, sure. they had yeah. traditions right. together, they had, you know, St. Patrick's Day and right. all of those traditions. But if you forget, you know, about the person that, mm -hmm. that, that stands at the intersection of human history, mm -hmm. And you be, and after a time, your language doesn't reflect that, then your paradigm doesn't reflect mm -hmm. it, your parenting doesn't reflect it. Mm -hmm. You kind of have to ask yourself, why are we here? So, you know, Start With Jesus is about going back to the root. Yeah. And for us as Catholics, even though if we're like, oh, I love Jesus, he's, he's like someone said to me, he's my man. I was like, great. <laughs> but, but go back to that rootedness in right. Jesus again. You're, you're never done with that. Is there a formula that you can use to help people kind of share their faith or share their faith journey that's maybe not quite so scary. Yeah, you know, it's so interesting because I'm married to um, a Wisconsinite as well. And, you know, when I started talking about some of these concepts with him, he was like, wait, 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 this is a lot for me. And I, I realized a lot of um, the people around here are very introverted processors. Mm -hmm. So you have to hear it a few times mm -hmm. to be comfortable with it. And I think, you know, I often start with like, did anybody get good news this week? Mm. And so, like, did you, any of you get good news this week? Like, what, what happened this week? And so, like, for me, I had a recital with my children this weekend. Okay. Oh, you got a recital! 
excited. That's like so exciting. Did you, Mike, did you have, have any good news happen this week at the parish? Or? I had a great news. Uh, my great news, personally, is just that I had a weekend off. Which, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> which does not happen very often. Yeah. So. But that lifted my spirits, for yeah, sure. Yeah, you needed yeah. that. What about yeah. you, Lisa? What's been good news well, I, I'm, we're getting. We were happy to get our Christmas shopping done because next weekend our son is graduating from college. Ooh. So, Yay. yeah. So, yeah, there's lots of good news to be had. Yeah. So. And this is what I would say for, for anyone watching or listening in, is that, did you see the reaction when we were like, yay, oh, we go, yeah, your son's graduating. That's good news. And mm -hmm. we have the opportunity as Catholics to hear good news every time we go to Mass or interact mm -hmm. with each other. And I think starting with, the good news is good news. Mm -hmm. And it should feel like good news. And I think a lot of times... You know, we um, start with, you know, the world is broken. Right. You are broken. Now, right. this is true. There's a lot of mm. difficult things happening in life. But the, the great story, the good news starts with you are loved. Mm. For, for God so loved the world. Mm -hmm. And so I think the good news starts with finding places where you can connect with people in really tangible ways around um, how good news is touching their life. Right. Now, that... And then, then you can make the leap to, well, you know what's been some great news for me is I've been able to pray with my children at night during Advent. Mm. And, oh, my gosh, yes, I, I don't know how to do that. Can you? And, you know, it's just sure. looking for opportunities. But I think we have to build trust mm. as Catholics mm. with each other. I think we have to build community. Right. And I think we can't be afraid um, to share, like, what's really going on right. deep inside us. Right. Because, you know, there's a culture of Midwest nice. Yeah. Because we're very polite. <laughs> right? We don't offend anyone. Yeah. But, right. you know, this if this if, if this good news has changed our lives, why would we keep it to ourselves? Yeah. Oh, that's beautiful. Why would we want to keep right. it? Why? Exactly. Right. Exactly. Why? Yeah. 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 In your, in this chapter, Julian, if you remember, you share a story of um, your one-on-one -on -one of sharing the good news with someone um, that you know. Mm -hmm. And so do you think that is the, is, do you think, do you find it's better to, sh to start sharing the good news of Jesus with somebody we know or somebody we don't know at all? Is it better to question. start in anonymity or, <laughs> or familiarity? I think this is a great question because, you know, you come together at Mass on Sunday here at St. Bernard Parish and you're sitting beside people that you might know and those that you don't know. Mm -hmm. And then you say, okay, now you're going to go and share how Jesus has changed your life and what gives you hope and you're like, Ooh. So I always say to people, Share with someone in your family first. So mm -hmm. I came home from a conference one time and I was like, oh, wait till I tell you what I just learned at this conference. And my husband's like, oh. Because <laughs> I, I, I experiment, I pilot things with him all the time. Like, and then I said to him, you know, um, one of the things that they told us at this conference is we should pray aloud with each other and share our good news. He's like, great, I do pray, you know. Uh, he's like, I went to Catholic school. I'm like, it's okay. I'm not like I'm not asking for your credentials as a Catholic evangelist here. But that night we were we were in bed and I kind of just leaned over and I said, caught his hand and I said, Hey, um, let's pray. And he was like, Okay. Mm -hmm. And it was like this 30-second interval where it was like the longest 30 seconds of my right. marriage. Right. And I said, Okay, go on now. And he goes, Oh, I already did. I prayed oh. my heart. And I'm like, no, 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 we have to, to do it out loud. Right. And he was like, you go first. And I was like, no, you go first. No, you're, you're the one that works for the church. And I was like, why is this so hard? Yeah. And I realized for a lot of Catholics, we don't have a framework to share good news. Yeah. I have a really simple one. And this one really works for children and young adults too. And I call it, whoops, wow, please, and thank you. Mm -hmm. Whoops, wow, please, and thank you. You probably say oops instead of whoops, but that's an Irish thing. But it's four parts. This is a great way to share good news and to invite the Lord in. What was the worst moment of your day? Like, whoops, where were you at your absolute worst? And like, just give that to the Lord. Voice that, you know, Lord, I need your help in my parenting because I lost my temper. Where was your wow moment? Mm -hmm. But you know what, Lord? I kissed every one of my children today. I mm. told them I was praying. Like, what is that wow moment? Right. What are you thankful for? And what are you asking, please? What are you asking mm. God to help you with? Like, that's a great way to share a simple framework yeah. together so that you can get comfortable verbalizing good news, but also where you need God's help. Right. And then from that, you know, if you're in a situation where you're in a grocery store or someone is having a hard time, you can say, you know what, I remember what it was like to have a two-year-old having a tantrum. I will be praying for you. You know, sometimes you'd be surprised at how much those 
opportunities can lead to something deep. Sure. Yeah. Oh, that's beautiful. Thank you. Yeah. You're welcome. So, um, why is it important that we share the good news with those we love? If we don't share the good news, who will? Mm. Because I think about our children. There's, think about yourselves, right? Yeah. How much bad news is inundating us right. in media or television every day, right? There's loads. Um, but God is doing something in the midst of our lives. Mm. And I think many people don't know, or, or even because the pace of life is so fast, don't slow down enough to say, where are you, God, today? Mm. Like my daughter just told me this week, she's like, there's a girl in my class, Mom, who doesn't believe in God. And, and I said, how does that make you feel? And she said, really sad, Mom. I said, so what are you going to do? She said, I'm going to be really good to her, and I'm going to pray for her every day. Aww. And then I said, okay, Ava, those are beautiful, but I want you also to look for an opportunity where you can tell her just how much mm -hmm. Jesus means to you. Right. And she was like, okay, yeah, that sounds great. And I was like, okay, if, her, if my 10-year-old can do this, right. can we do this right. too? Mm -hmm. Because so many people are counting on us to hear you are loved, there is mm -hmm. hope, Jesus is with you, no matter what you go through in life, mm -hmm. he is there, his arms are merciful, you're greater than any mistake. Those words can be so powerful to someone who's struggling. Mm -hmm. So if we don't, who's going to do it? Yeah, that's great. Now, I'm going to maybe change things up a little bit here, but as we're talking, I'm kind of realizing something. So in this um, chapter, Julian, we, yeah. we talk a lot about um, this big word, the great map, right? And there's kind of this formula that you share yeah. that we're going to share with our leaders yes. too and encourage them to get to know. But as we're having this conversation, you're also showing all these other ways, beautiful ways to share that are mm -hmm. much more simple and not this kind of Prescriptive. point by point yeah. formula. So... Um, how do you suggest that we use this formula? Like, what is it we need to know about this formula in order to share with other mm -hmm. people? This is a great question because I think this is where it kind of crystallizes. So for many people today, they don't know the big gospel story. Mm -hmm. They don't know how everything fits together. Old Testament, New Testament, you know, is Jesus the Son of God? Who did he come right. to save? None of that. And I think, you know, in sharing your story, you can help people understand how Jesus has, um, has transformed your life. Mm. But the kerygma basically means to proclaim or herald. Mm -hmm. Like, mm -hmm. hark the herald angels sing. Mm -hmm. Right? So the angels came to herald or to share good news. And there's a really, really simple format that I use that spans the entire Bible. And it's in five movements. Mm -hmm. It's God is love and has created me for relationship with mm -hmm. him. So mm -hmm. it's the first movement. God is created. He creates us. Think of Genesis. I have broken my relationship with God by my sin. Sin enters the world because we disobey God, mm -hmm. right? But Jesus is sent to us as God's son, as God himself, to redeem us from mm -hmm. sin. And that's the third movement. And the fourth movement is... Jesus invites me to give my life to him. Mm. And then the last movement is, and now that I've given my life to him, he sends the Holy Spirit to me to set me on fire and go out and change mm. the world. That spans everything from Old Testament to go and make disciples, right? Oh, okay. So the kerygma, you know, you can do it as simply as this. Christ has died. Christ has risen. Christ has mm. won't come in. And we don't say that anymore, but that's a kerygmatic statement. Right. Mass is actually an unveiling of all the kerygma. Mm. You know, you're gathered up into God's law. If you hear the word of God, you're reminded to be contrite. I confess to Almighty God and you, my brothers and sisters. Mm -hmm. And then the Eucharist is giving us broken open, and then we're sent out to share with the power of the Holy Spirit wow. as new people. Wow. So I, I think the word kerygma can be very scary for people, but I, I kind of flip it a little bit, and I call it the kernel. Like, you know when you have a popcorn and you put a little heat and pressure, it pops? It's, I tell my children that the, the kerygma is the kernel of our faith. Mm. And, you know, sometimes people um, say that, you know, you have to, to uh, you respond to your faith when you've, you're feeling hot like the heat <laughs> or when there's light. <laughs> you know? That's true. So, right? Yeah. So you just yeah. kind of look at this and just pop. It just makes your faith pop. Beautiful. Yeah. yeah. So don't be afraid of this word. This is a part, this is an ancient, ancient word. It's actually found in the scriptures too. Oh, yeah. Thank you so much. Well, that's, um, did we 
Did you have any other questions? I think we, I think we covered everything, okay. did we not? I think we okay. did. I'm so excited. I'm, yeah, and I'm sure you all have many more questions, but the good news is, more good, good news, news. <laughs> <laughs> that um, Julianne will be coming back, as we said. She'll be coming here in March, and we will um, be able, we can't wait either. Yeah. We're very excited. Thank so you. if everybody would um, join with us, we're going to, as we do, close with the final prayer that's in this chapter, and that's on page 24 in your books. Uh, we'll just give you a minute to find that here, page 24. And then Deacon Mike, if you want to get us started, we'll join in. Sure. So in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. amen. Jesus, we know that you are with us, and we feel your loving presence. We call upon you to help us grow in friendship with you. Help us to share you with others. We know that the work is difficult and hard. May we see with clarity, regard all with charity, and, and respond, respond with alacrity. In your name, amen. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. Till next time. Take care, everybody. See you soon. <laughs>